How come I've never done this video before? DK back here again. And today, yeah, I know it's been a while since I've done a video, since my comeback video. This video, I am going to show you guys my vinyl record collection. Yeah, I got... I got a pretty good stack here. I mean, I mean, it's definitely not the best collection. Like this is just what I have at the moment. But like, there's definitely plenty more that I, I still like to get. And like, if, like if you don't see your favorite band or artist in there, like, don't worry. Like, I pl I will probably buy the record at some point. You know. So, anyways, guys, let's get started. So we got the first one. Please, please me. This is a great album. I I like this one. This is yeah. Like I said, the first album. Uh, uh yeah this is like yeah yeah, yeah like it definitely sounds like kind of like that late 50s sound um my favorite song on this one is probably i saw her standing there and love me do the next one i have is help which is i guess i guess you could technically say like the pack favorite soundtrack as well since the, there's a movie of this as well yeah, I listened to this one once or twice. This one, this one, I like. I like this one as well. Help! Uh, you got to hide your love away. Yeah, those, those ones I think are my favorites. And same with um, oh yeah, Ticket to Ride is also on here. Act naturally. I've just seen the face. And yesterday, those are, yeah. This is this is definitely one of my favorite records from them. Revolver. Their next, I believe, this one came out after Help. After Help or after Rubber Soul, I I, I can't remember. But yeah, that, this is another good one too. Um, like this is where they're kind of like leaning towards like some like their like psychedelic stuff. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. This is I, I know some people say this is the best one, but in my opinion, their best album or at least my favorite is this one, Sgt. Pepper. This was actually the first Beatles record that I bought. I I, I think I mentioned this in the video before. Like the Beatles, they're my favorite band ever, and uh, this is this is definitely yeah. Like I said, my favorite Beatles record. Like this is such a trippy <laughs> so trippy it's it's completely different than like their other albums at least from like their from please please me up until revolver like this is this is where they became like i guess like a pop band sort of like, like this is where they kind of they started adding like more classical elements into this one but yeah so yeah sergeant pepper and like low health my friends are losing this like the first like three songs on this are definitely my favorites and then uh, I, and I, I also like uh, when I'm 64 in the day in the life. Yeah, I, I and I saw a Paul McCartney in concert a few years ago. I think I, I think I saw the video on the channel somewhere. Like, yeah, yeah, like it was definitely my, it was my favorite concert. And I have Let It Be, the final album, which was released I think a month after they announced that the band broke up. And uh, this, uh, it's it's a it's a pretty good album. Uh, definitely, maybe, I don't know if it's my top favorite. But I haven't listened to to this one as much. And it has let it be, and I've got a feeling. You get back. I, I mean, have you guys watched the documentary The Beatles Get Back on Disney Plus? It's so good. I I highly recommend it. So yeah, that's all my Beatles records. Uh, and I have the Rolling Stones. That's the only Rolling Stones album I have. Their Sticky Fingers album, which is either it, it's my number one favorite or it's my second favorite. I also like um, Let It Bleed, like their the previous album. Uh, this one has uh, Brown Sugar, Wild Horses. Oh, bitches on you as well. I I, th I think I think this is my fair era of the Rolling Stones, like when Mick Taylor came in, like after Brian Jones died in, in his pool. Yeah, I, th I think this is this like this is the era where the Rolling Stones had like had like their best hits, and then I mean, even the, like the Ronnie Wood era was great too. Like, like even that one had really good hits as well. But I think the Mick Taylor era, like the era with Mick Taylor was probably my favorite. And I got Jimi Hendrix. Are you experienced? That? I haven't. I think I listened to this one once, and uh, I, I, this is this is a great album as well. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, yeah. Purple Haze, Hey Joe, When Cries Mary, Foxy Lady, great songs. And this is like where like this is like metal, kind of like metal before metal was a thing, basically. Like I mean, if you listen to like like all the hard stuff from like the late sixties, like you'll know what I mean. Uh, yeah, this is kind of like the more like the only psychedelic al psychedelic rock album that I really have. Uh, I like to get the Doors debut album at some point. Uh, this one is Deep Purple. Come taste the band. Uh, I have. I actually have not listened to this one. Um, one of my, oh, this is, oh, this is the David Coverdale era. Um, well, so one of my mom's clients had a few records and like they were trying to get rid of them, so they just ended up giving them to me. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't listened to this one at all, so I can't really say much about it. But, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. 
I mean, I, I like Deep Purple. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know many of the songs, but it's like, like the songs I know, like they're like they're good. Uh, like I like Smoke on the Water, and the easiest guitar riff of all time. I was to me, I think it's the easiest one, and then Highway Star, and then like some of like the early like psychedelic stuff. I think is pretty good too. Elton John's Here and There, which is a live album actually. Uh, one side is live at the Royal Festival Hall in London, and the other side is live at Madison Square Garden in New York. Yeah, this uh, like I don't I normally don't listen to live albums, but this one's actually really really good. Like, like on one side he's playing uh, Skyline Pigeon, Border Song, Honky Cat, Love Song, and Crocodile Rock, and then the Madison Square Garden one. This is where it's, he's playing Funeral for a Friend, Love Lies Bleeding, Rocket Man, Benny the Jets, and uh, Take Me to the Pilots. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I only listen to, it, to this one once in a while, but like this is actually really really good. And then I have his Goodbye Yellow Brick Road album, which I think is probably, out of all the Elton John albums I've listened to so far, this is probably my favorite one. This is, it's a, it's a, it's a long album too, it's a double album too. Yeah, like Goodbye Yellow Brick Road is actually, my, well definitely probably my favorite one on this one. And then Saturday Night's All Ready for Fighting. Oh yeah, Candle in the Wind's on this one, and then Benny and the Jets, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of my favorites are on this album, and I'm actually going to Vancouver in October to go see him in concert because I miss his Winnipeg show. And we got some of my Eagles records here. I got oh, it's falling, falling out here. Uh, their Eagles debut album. This, uh, this is a pretty good album actually. Uh, Take it easy, witchy woman, peaceful, easy feeling are all on this one. Three great songs, definitely a really good album. And then all their greatest hits. Um, Eagles greatest hits from 1971. Is that what? Yeah, 71 to 75, yeah, um, which I think is their best-selling, uh, actually, I think the best-selling compilation album of all time, if I'm correct. Yeah, this one has, the, and this was before Hotel California, so, like, that, like, this one has great songs, too, but, like, I think, yeah, I think Hotel California is their best album, for sure, and then uh, their next one, uh, The Long Run, uh, which was, well, their last one for a while until, before they broke up until they got back together in 1994. Yeah, uh, this one... I can't remember if I listened to the second side of it. I, I know I listened to the first side of it. I, I, th I think I liked it. Yeah, this is a, this is a pretty good album. Uh, um, yeah, like Hotel California is definitely my favorite album from them. And I got Aerosmith's debut album. Uh, I bought this at a used store. I'm besides kind of damaged a little bit. Uh, yeah, this is. I think Aeros I think their early albums are their best one. Like this one, Get Your Wings, Toys in the Attic, and uh, and Rocks. I even like as well. It has a very raw sound to it. You know, Toys in the Attic. That's probably my favorite out of the. Other early albums that uh, I like, I like to get their other ones. I, I even saw, I saw their Get Their Wings album, like a used copy of it at some point at the same store I bought the their debut one from. But I don't I don't know why I didn't buy it. I should have. And then I got Leonard Skinner. It's pronounced Leonard Skinner. <laughs> yeah, this is their debut album. The only album I've listened to from them actually. This one has a has most of their great songs like Tuesday's Gone, Give Me Three Steps, Simple Man, and Free Bird. Yeah, you gotta save the best song for last. Uh, another album I've only listened to. Yeah, like, yeah, I think I said I only listened to this one once, and uh, I actually really like this album. Uh, this band, they just weren't after that plane crash, man. That they like they were just. I, I mean, yeah, they broke up after the plane crash, but like, at, like, but when they got back together in '87, like they were just, it was just not the same. Like, without Ronnie Van Sant, there's no Leonard Skinner, and then of course, like those other two people that died in the crash, and then, and then eventually after they after the band got back, back together, like almost like. Almost everybody, almost almost all the original members like ended up dying. I think only Gary Washington and um, Artemis Pyle, like those are the only guys like from the good era of like Skinner who's still around. And I got ACDC's Highway to Hell. Um, this this is definitely my favorite out of the Bon Scott era and um, the Brian Johnson era. I like the Brian Johnson era a lot. I think Back in Black is the best one. Which I, I actually I have the CD of that one, but I, I think I want to get the vinyl record of this one of it as well. And same with their um, let I mean, maybe like the rest of the Bon Scott. Like I listened to all the Bon Scott albums. I haven't listened to all the Brian Johnson ones yet though. But but I think yeah, the Bon Scott ones are definitely the best ones. And the, even the, the Brian Johnson ones are great too. Like I even listen even their new album is really really good too. Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, like, I mean their old stuff will always be the best stuff. The new album Power Up, but uh, like. It's I think it's their it's their best album since Razor's Edge, like like it's like it still sticks to their old sound uh, and it, it still sounds like something from like the eighties or early nineties.
And, that, and this one, I, I haven't listened to this one yet either. Bruce Springsteen's uh, Tunnel of Love. Uh, I haven't listened to the Springsteen album either. But this is another one that my mom's playing gave me. And this one, and I have uh, Brian Adams' Cuts Like a Knife. This is, I, I like this one a lot, actually. I, I'm, I, I know the, the first time, the first couple times I listened to it, I was like, eh, it's, it's good. But then... Uh, but then, uh, but then the more I listened to it, it started to grow on me more. But I think his best one is Reckless, which I I don't have that one on vinyl, but I want to get it so bad. It's my it's my favorite album from Brian Adams. This one, ha yeah, Cuts Like a Knife is on here and Straight from the Heart. This time, I'm ready and Take Me Back. The, the, I think those are my my favorite songs on that album, but. But if you ask me what my favorite songs are on the Reckless album, I'm just gonna say the whole album. And next one I have is Queen's Greatest Hits. This is a great Greatest Hits album. I love this Greatest Hits album. I, mean, I have another like compilation album from theirs which has more songs, but I, but I think that this one's the my favorite one. Like you have Bohemian Rhapsody for the first song, then you even have Please Little Thing Called Love, Somebody to Love, uh, Another One Bites the Dust, Fat Bottom Girls, Me and My Best Friend, Don't Stop Me Now, like all like. Like these are their best songs. Like what else can I say? And next I have is Van Halen's 1984 album, which I think is my favorite album from them. Uh, I even like the first two albums a lot as well. And um, I think most people would say this is their last good album. It's like I know a lot. Of, there's a lot of people who are not fans of like the Van Hagar stuff. But honestly, I mean, I like the 5150 era of Van Halen, like with Sammy Hagar. But I don't know. It's after that, I'm just, I just was not the biggest fan. Man. Like. I listened to this. I've had this on repeat for quite a while, but yeah, I love the synthesizers in this one the the, the most. Uh, I mean, they had it in, I believe, Diver Down. I think I think Diver Down. Like yeah, like they they use it, but like like they like they did a good job with it. But I think it was much better than this one. Rest in peace, Eddie Van Halen, my favorite guitar player of all time. Another one my mom's playing gave me. I haven't listened to yet either. Roxy Music, the Flesh and Blood album. I don't know anything about Roxy Music. Blink 182's Enema of the States. Um, I think, it's, I think it's the only Blink album I've listened to. Well, I, other than their greatest hits album, like this is the only like, main album I've listened to. And this is the first one where Travis Barker comes in. Uh, I, I think this, uh, yeah, this one has um, like all the small things. What's my age again? Adam song. Like, they're, like this is like when Travis Scott came in, that saved the band and they became like bigger and more popular than they were when they had Scott Rayner. I, I wish Tom, Tom DeLonge would come back to Blink-182. It's not the same without him. And then I got Green Day's American Idiot. Uh, yeah, this is, this is another long album too. Uh, I was really one side has American, well, American Idiot and uh, Jesus of Suburbia, which is just a fucking long ass song. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I guess I guess you could say it's a double album. Is it a double album? Or, uh, I, I, I guess you could probably say it's a double album. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I haven't I haven't really listened to Green Day as much as I used to. I, I mean, I, I, still, I still love Green Day, but like. I, don't know, I just haven't really gotten around to listening to them as much as I'm, I mainly listen to like more like the hair metal stuff or like some of the seventies like hard rock bands. But American Idiot is really good. I wish I wish I saw Green Day in concert when they were here back in I think two thousand nine. That was probably the last time they were here. Yeah, I know I know some of their new songs haven't been that great. I mean that one album they came out with a couple of years ago, like I, I I didn't listen to that album, but I heard a couple of songs from it, and I'm just like, yeah, that's. That doesn't sound like Green Day. Next one I have is Revolution Radio, another Green Day album. Uh, this this one's pretty good. I mean, I don't think it's as good as American Idiot or Twenty First Century Breakdown. I have Twenty First Century Breakdown on the CD, by the way. I, I don't I don't I don't know if that one's out on vinyl actually. I just I can never find it. Uh, yeah, yeah. This one has um, yeah, Bang Bang, Revolution Radio, and uh, Still Breathing. Th those are, yeah, those are really good. Stuff. And the oh yeah, Troubled Times I also like as well. Yeah, I, I wish Green Day would come back to Winnipeg. I, I know, I, I don't know if they still did or or if it got canceled because of COVID. But when they because they announced they were doing that tour with um, with Fall Out Boy and uh, I want to say Weezer. I think they were doing a tour together, those three bands. But I don't know, if, I don't know if that ever happened because of COVID. And we're getting got my Metallica record. I, well, the first five albums, which I'm mean, the only albums I like from them really. I mean. Death Makes Daddy and Hardwired, Hardwired and Selfless Fuck is actually pretty good. Uh, so yeah, I got Kill em All, their first album, which they recorded right after they booted Dave Mustaine out of the band in Houston. And, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, at least Dave Mustaine still had some credit for this album. Oh yeah, this, yeah, such a raw sound of this one too. Like, this is when they were just starting out, like they just didn't quite have the budget to, 
and Cliff Burton, man, my God, that guy is a fucking beast on the bass, and then he was Ride the Lightning, my favorite album from them, actually. I know everyone says Master of Puppets is, the, is their favorite, but I know, I, I like this one a little bit more. I think the songs on this one are the best. I know everyone says Master of Puppets is their favorite, but yeah, like, I, my, I, For Whom the Bell Tolls, that's probably my favorite Metallica song. Like, it's just so heavy, it's like, I, 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 don't, I think it's just the themes that they went for in this one that is what I like so much, and it's like, to me, it's, it's much more heavier than Kill Em All, and then Master of Puppets, Probably, probably my second favorite album from them, actually. Uh, yeah, Battery, Ma Master of Puppets, Welcome Home Sanitarium, Orion, with such a great bass solo from Cliff Burton, and it's sad that it's his last album before he got killed in a bus accident. Rest in peace, Cliff Burton. Yeah, Metallica, man. Like, the, the Cliff Burton era is the best era. Like, I, I, I hope they do a Metallica biopic or something. Like, I'd sign up for that. <laughs> and then we got some of the... the some of like, the almost... I can see some people say well, is like considered like the weaker albums like, um, Injustice for All. This is a, this is pretty good. Definitely not like I said, not as good as like the Cliff Burton era. Like this is where Jason Newstead comes in. I mean, to me, I think they turned like I think he did turn his bass off. Put new recording this album. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, like, like these like Sweat in the Black album. These are albums I listen to. I don't really listen to a whole lot. I think I only listened to this one once. To be honest with you, like um, Enter Sandman and Sabbath True are great songs, but like. Oh, and nothing else. Yeah, nothing else matters. <laughs> that's a, that's another great one as well. Yeah, but yeah. I don't. I, I just don't listen to this one as much. So it just was never really one of my favorites. But like the ones like Reload, Load and Reload, uh, Insane Anger, which I think is, I think Insane Anger is definitely their worst album. But I think Load and Reload is just okay. But like Death Magnetic and Hardwired, like I think those are like their best ones since um, Master Puppets. And then I have Motley Crue's greatest hits. I, yeah, like, I'm a, I love the hair metal era. I know I don't have many hair metal stuff. I mean, I, I mean, I guess you could probably count Van Halen, but um, but yeah, like, this is from their too fast, from too fast for love up until Saints of Los Angeles, like, like those albums. I mean, I, mean, I don't, I don't know what album or what year this album came out. Uh, like this, just like the original four guys, like with Vince, Mick, Tommy, and Nikki, like, but um, yeah, like, there's no like. Nothing from the John Karabi era or, or like anything from those drummers who replaced Tommy Lee in that period of time. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, no, I got this was around the time their movie the the Dirt came out. That like that was when I was starting to like really get into this band. Uh, like I, I I don't know how many times I watched that movie. Like, I got already lost count. But um, yeah, like, I mean like the movie's good too. Uh, I mean I I wish it was a little bit longer though. But, um, yeah, I I like to see more. Like even more biopics from like the hair metal era, like you know, like, I mean, like I mentioned, I wanted a Metallica movie. And I think the Guns, I think the Guns and Roses movie would be pretty good too. And I, and I wish I had their Appetite for Destruction album. Like, I mean, I have the CD of, of their um, the Appetite album as well, but I don't know, I don't know why I don't have the vinyl. But but like a lot of like the hair metal stuff I listen to, like I even have on Spotify. Like I got a bunch of albums, say like all the like the good Motley Crue albums I have. Say like, I even got like Poison and then White Snake. And then now we're getting to like more like my like the pop stuff. Um, I have ABBA's Arrival. I uh, haven't listened to this one yet either. I mean, I just actually I bought this stuff that long ago, but uh, haven't got around to listening to it yet. Um, it has Dancing Queen, Knowing Me, Knowing You, Money, 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 and then that, and then I think it's like a later release where he puts a Gimme, Gimme, Gimme in that from Midnight, which I I, I mean I kind of wish to have that one, but I, I'm like I'm I'm happy with it. I mean, I'll I'll still listen to it. So like. Well, like, I love ABBA. <laughs> I don't care what people say. I love ABBA. This one, this is a must. If you collect CDs, vinyl records, cassettes, this is a must-own album. Brilla. Yes, Michael Jackson's Thriller, the best-selling album of all time. You gotta have this. To be honest, this might this might even be my favorite album of all time. I'm not sure. Like, this is like all of his like these all these songs on here are great. Like, he's even done a song with Paul McCartney for and um. What else can I, what else can I say about Thriller that hasn't been said yet? And then, and they even announced a Michael Jackson biopic a long time ago. Uh, good luck finding a guy who can play Michael Jackson. You gotta find someone who's extremely talented for that role. And then I have another Michael Jackson one. I have Michael Jackson's Bad, a great, a great album as well. But I mean, Thriller is slightly better. I mean, this is probably my second favorite album from him, and then Off the Wall, which I don't have yet. But I, I like to get Off the Wall. Itself. This one has great, great songs too. Uh, like, like even, even like when I'm at work, sometimes like I'll listen to like this one in the Thriller album, like on repeat. 
and a thriller I, I played on repeat constantly. <laughs> and then the last one, we have a soundtrack here, Footloose. Yeah, I love Footloose, like the movie and even the soundtrack is great as well. And I was even in a school musical Footloose in my grade 12 year. I, yeah, um, yeah, I like, I like to get more movie soundtracks. Like, if, if I could find like the Top Gun soundtrack or something, I'd, get, I'd probably get that. Maybe even, I don't know if they're out on vinyl, like the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtracks that I would like to get. Like, whether they're on vinyl or CD, like either or, it's, it's totally fine. But yeah, like, Kenny Loggins, man, that guy, the king of 80s movie soundtracks, like, you can't go, like, you can't go wrong with Kenny Loggins. He's, that man is the GOAT. So yeah, those are all my vinyl records. I know, like I said in the beginning, it's probably not the greatest collection. I like to get more, like, like there's more like Rolling Stones stuff I want to get, and then like, and the, like those Motley Crue ones that I still like to get. And um, yeah, and uh, oh yeah, and I don't even have Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I should probably get some Zeppelin in there too. Another band I absolutely love. But yes, uh, thank you so much for watching, and thank you guys for sticking around. I know I've been gone for so long. Shit, just gone away. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad to be back. But thank you all for watching, guys, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.